Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing what kind of performance gains I got after overclocking my new i5-7600K. Just like last time, I'm using the MSI Z270 SLI Plus, 16 gigs of RipJaws DDR4 RAM, and a Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 1070. I tested 3 d Mark's Firestrike Benchmark and four games at ultra settings. I'm gonna be focusing on my results at 1080p, as higher resolutions are more likely to cause even a small bottleneck with the 1070. Overclocking the 7600 was a breeze. By changing the CPU multiplier and V-Core voltage, I was able to obtain a 4.8 GHz overclock on the Hyper 212 EVO air cooler and a 5 GHz overclock on the Corsair H100i V2 water cooler. For those curious, here are the voltages I ended up using. 1.250 for the 4.8 GHz and 1.30 for 5 GHz. I also enabled XMP for the RAM and a negative one multiplier on uh, these instructions. Everything else is default. First up, 3D Mark's Firestrike demo saw very minimal gains with 5 GHz, grabbing a total of 15,186 compared to 14,175 at stock. That's only about a 7% gain, which for an 800 MHz overclock was a bit surprising. However, I admit I'm kind of an idiot and wasn't paying attention to the physics score, so that may have done better than just the 7. Next up we've got Fallout 4. Now before this video I ran all my benchmarks in Diamond City, but because of Bethesda's janky physics engine, the game can't handle frame rates over about 130, and Diamond City was getting numbers in the 180s. So to make sure the benchmark was consistent between each test, I decided to switch it up and do a run in the city of Far Harbor. Its heavy fog effects really tax the system, providing a good medium to heavy load area. As you can see in this chart, Fallout gains quite a bit from the initial jump from stock speeds to 4.8 GHz, but doesn't gain much extra at 5 GHz. The jump to 4.8 grabs a 13% increase in average frame rates and 1% lows. 5 GHz only adds an extra 1% to the average frame rates, so though there is a difference, it's minute. Moving on to The Witcher 3, we see the same sort of story. The initial boost to 4.8 GHz gains a solid 8.5% on average frame rates and almost doubles its 0.1% lows. However, after that, the gains at 5 GHz are almost non-existent. Hitman and Bioshock both end up being the same sort of thing. We get a decent bump in the initial 600 MHz overclock, but seem to be having diminishing returns when we get to 5 GHz. The only, if any, noticeable difference between the two are the 0.1% lows, which do help with reducing stuttering. Of course all these numbers are well above 60, but if this was 1440p or 4k, you may need those extra frames. As I stated earlier, I was only able to obtain a 5 GHz overclock with my new H100i V2 water cooler, and as far as price goes, it's not especially cheap. If we do a quick performance per dollar comparison, we see that the best value here is the 4.8 GHz overclock using the Hyper 212 EVO. With temperatures maxing out in the low to mid 70s, the EVO was able to cool the CPU pretty effectively up to 4.8 GHz. Getting those last 200 MHz puts a serious dent into the value of this system. However, that's not to say a water cooler isn't worth it. The H100i V2 provides much lower idling temps and even lower temps while operating at load. High temperatures can eventually produce instability in an overclock and add to the wear and tear of a system, so if you're worried about longevity, it may be worth lowering your value a bit if you plan on overclocking. I know this wasn't in any way a review of the H100i V2, but I think it's a great product. It was simple to set up, runs quiet and cool, and since I had a $25 Amazon gift card, the $82 price was a great deal. Overall I'm happy with the overclocking performance of the i5-7600K. It isn't mind blowing, but it never is. I get a lot of enjoyment out of squeezing every bit of performance out of my machine, so it's going to depend on how much you like messing around with your computer if it's really worth it. Okay, I guess that's about it. I hope this video was informative in some way. If you have any questions about my benchmarking methodology or anything I didn't cover, let me know in the comments. Okay, everybody, that was my video for this week. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment in the comments section. And as always, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you wanna see more videos like this one in the future, Coming up next week, I should have another video. I, again, have no idea what it's going to be. But as always, I uh, hope you stick around for it. And thanks for watching.